Support for Stepping Out comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich. This program is sponsored in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support the arts and culture in the greater New Orleans area. Scott Laborde and welcome to Stepping Out, spotlighting the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. Seated at our table tonight, Poppy Tucker, host of the radio program Louisiana Eats, airing twice weekly on WWNO Radio. Hello, my dear. Hi, Peg. Hello. Back twice in a row, second week in a row, Gwen Tompkins, host of the radio program Music Inside Out, airing on WWNO, too. Great to see you again. Nice Thanks to be here. Thanks. Hello. And Alan Mason of Crescent City Jewish News and TheaterCriticism.com. Later on in our show, we'll have a performance from the Symphony Chorus of New Orleans, and we'll be spotlighting their upcoming performances of Handel's Messiah. But first up, Puppy. Oh, we have to start off this week with some sad news, because New Orleans lost a very important food icon yesterday, and that was Robert Wan, third generation of Leidenheimers. His mother was Josephine Leidenheimer. And he passed away yesterday, and the services are tomorrow at Trinity Episcopal on Jackson Avenue. And our condolences go to the Juan family, but and bravo to them, because Sandy is the fourth generation. Sandy's got a fifth generation who's coming into the business. And so we will see that business continue, and they have helped keep our New Orleans poor boy loaf alive and vital. So, so sorry about Mr. Juan. Now, it is Christmas time, and we're going to change the Yay. topic completely, and we're going to talk about a Christmas miracle, because if there ever was one, this is it. This absolutely is hilarious. So, the, there is a Christmas miracle pop-up going on, Mondays through Thursdays at Long Way Tavern, and this is going on through December 31st. There's also one going on every day of the week. At, um, at Barrel Proof, almost uptown. And the story is this, I just love it. Greg Boehm is a Jewish guy. Now, the drinks were showing, this is hilarious. You can go there and there's the Christmas Barrel, there's the Yippie Kaye, there's a Christmas <laughs> Politan. The, the atmosphere in the bar is like crazy because, you know, there's TVs, but what's playing on the TV are Christmas movies and the burning Yule log. This is about as kitschy as you get for Christmas. And by the way, they will take reservations. And Longway Tavern is a tiny little place in the quarter, so I would make them. But the, the story is that there is this Greg Boehm guy, who is a Jewish guy from New York, and he was building a bar, and it was under construction. And his mother called from, t from Tibet to say, don't do construction on the bar in December. Open a Christmas bar. Well, apparently, since he was a little boy, he's been a Christmas obsessive. He used to secretly celebrate Christmas with decorations and all in his grandparents' basement. So with his—isn't this a wild story? So with his collaborator, Joan Spiegel, the Christmas miracle has popped up in Greece and Montreal and Paris and Hong Kong. So now it's popping up both at Barrel Proof and at Longway Tavern. And then also associated with this, Sip and Sam. Santa, Beach Bum Berry at Latitude 29 is doing a Tiki Christmas. It's also a collaboration with Beam and Spiegel. And then I just learned this, I'm telling you, this Christmas bar special happening thing is coming, coming. Barcadia jumped on the bandwagon recently. So you can stop in and get something called a Blitzen through January 6th <laughs> and lots of other delicious things. Till January 6th at Barcadia when we switch over to King Cake, of course. Mm. And then for us sort of more staid folks, the Revion is here again. Yay. And of course, that's just bargains of 60 different restaurants, multi-course meals, and I wanted to point out delicious four courses for $59 at Seaworthy with oysters and diver scallops mm. with maitake mushrooms and almond semifredo for dessert. 
Josephine Estelle also has four courses for $55. Their carrot ravioli is really special. And I want some chocolate cheesecake with peppermint gelato. And then, I, you know, you go to Christmas in the Oaks, make reservations at Cafe de Gas for their $44 for four courses, sea scallops, rack of lamb, pot de creme, and down in the quarter, also $44 for four courses, so boo, where you get yellowtail crudo, duck hash, grilled beef, and I love this, the cannoli yule log. Yeah. Oh. Why haven't we thought of the cannoli what yule log? What a good idea. And I'm just going to rush home and make a little cannoli <laughs> yule log myself. So happy, happy, and merry, merry uh -huh. till next week. That is such a good idea. Thank you so much, Bobby. And Gwen, we continue our theme here with holiday music. Indeed. Yeah, this is going to be a wonderful week, actually, of really good music and some hard choices. Um, the St. Louis Cathedral is going to continue its holiday uh, concert series, which Free. is a very nice series. Uh, and uh, there'll be three concerts this week. On Monday, Preservation Hall All-Stars are going to be playing. They're always fantastic. And, um, and they actually have called their, uh, their performance a Preservation Holiday. Oh. No. I'm not one for puns, but that one... That's pretty good. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, and then on Wednesday, uh, Jose Fairman and, uh, excuse me, Jose Fairman Ceballos, or Ceballos, I'm not mm -hmm. quite sure which, is appearing with Merengue 4, and I just love the idea of Merengue in the middle of St. Louis Cathedral. I think the cathedral needs a little mer Merengue, actually. Um, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. And then, uh, on, then on Thursday, Opera Creole, you know, Giovanna Joseph, oh, some yes. wonderful creation of beautiful opera singers they're going to be performing and you know making that joyful noise and I tell you if that doesn't get you into the holiday spirit I don't know what will um, these concerts are free they're from 6 to 7 um, p.m. Um, on each day and um, you know they're just delightful I went last week and I just loved it mm. um, but then also there are some um, wonderful secular uh, there's some wonderful secular music coming up that you all might like to know about uh, on Sunday evening Johnny Vodakovich trio is going to be playing at Snug Harbor, which mm -hmm. it's, you know, Johnny Vodakovich has been around for a long time. He plays all kinds of different music. He's a wonderful drummer, seminal drummer, really. But uh, but it, his heart seems to be in jazz, you know, and he, obviously he was a founding member of uh, Astral yeah. Project, and he was just, you know, he's just wonderful to listen to. And there is no more melodic uh, drum player, I think, or drummer in town right now. He actually, you know, gets a, a melody out of the drum that I've never heard before. It's really quite nice and he's going to be playing um, uh, at 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock on Sunday night then on uh, Tuesday and this is the part where the difficult choices come in on Tuesday Helen Gillet is going to be playing at the Marini Opera House mm -hmm. and um, uh, you know this is a, an extraordinary performer um, her 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 roots go um, you know, I mean, her roots in cello, they go all the way back to, uh, you know, the classical Western canon and all the way up to the Velvet Underground and beyond, along with Prince, who's her favorite performer, right? And uh, and so she's going to be performing some original music at the Marini Opera House, which has amazing acoustics, um, on cello with her loop pedal. And it's, you know, I mean, she will fill that, uh, she will fill that opera house. It's going to be pretty wonderful. Um, then uh, that is going to begin at 7 o'clock, but I believe the uh, doors open at 6.30. So if you have a chance to go over there, it's really going to be lovely. But if you don't have a chance to go over there, go to Chikiwawa, or at least that's what I would do if I, if I weren't going to, uh, to uh, the Marini Opera House. On Tuesday, it's going to be clarinetist Evan Christopher with Tom McDermott. Mm. And this is like one of the great duos uh, mm. in, that's working today in music. And uh, they're uh, obviously, um, they're wonderful separately, you know, Evan Christopher. Christopher has been doing some incredible work as a composer, um, and uh, and they are, you know, absolutely sublime together. Uh, they did an album together called Almost Native some years ago, which I would really recommend you all hearing. Uh, they are not native to New Orleans, uh, either man. I think each is from uh, St. Louis, but uh, they've made a home here, and they've really made a, a place here for, um, for the, you know, for um you know, their brand of music, which oftentimes draws from uh, early 20th century tropes. It's really, really quite nice. Um, and so, and, and, and actually, I have to say that before we move on, that, I mean, if you have not heard Evan Christopher's 
uh, uh, clarinet. I mean, it, it will make you cry. It's that emotional an experience. So if you have a chance, either see Helen Gillet or see um, <laughs> or see um, uh, Evan Christopher and Tom McDermott. Well, let me just say that Evan Christopher is traveling all the time too. He is. So the fact that he's back in New Orleans, even though this is his base, that's keep that in mind. It's as a well. big deal. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And New Orleans Magazine's quiz queen Julia Street has a question for us. Last time, Mary Toops gave us the names of the traditional Christmas cake that is shaped like an item you usually find near a fire and the French term for that confection. The answer, you log oh. bouche de Noel. Now tonight's question. A local jazz trumpeter and vocalist who was also known for his barbecue has a whimsical song about all he wants for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Who is he? And what does he want? Email your answers to Steppenout at WYES.org. Our prizes, a year subscription to Louisiana Life magazine. Tonight, we have a dish towel with the message Merry Nola Christmas from our friends at wearablevegetables.com. And we also have a pair of complimentary French Quarter walking tour tickets, courtesy of the Friends of the Cabildo. Tours run daily. Go to friendsofthecabildo.com for more info. And you can go to wyes.org slash out for our online calendar, including the Dover Quartet performing at Tulane University's Dixon Hall. That's on December 10th at 7.30 p.m. Go to friendsofmusic.org to get some more details. You can also link to our WYS YouTube channel to see our program. Earlier today, members of the Symphony Chorus of New Orleans performed in our Kornman studio, that best-known section of the Messiah. Here's music director Stephen Edwards to share some of this weekend's concert details. One of our favorite stepping out holiday traditions is to have the symphony chorus of New Orleans, many members of it. And of course, standing here is Stephen yeah. Edwards, approaching his 30th anniversary as being the head of the chorus. And congratulations. And also, this time around, because you've been doing this for many years, you're going to have some extra folks on the stage, We have too. a special treat for our audience this year. We have over 100 voices singing Messiah. In addition to symphony chorus, we have the Chalmette High School Voices Chorale, prepared by Annalise Kassar, and the University of New Orleans Chorale, prepared by Megan Deary. Now, you all are traveling this weekend. Saturday, where are you going to be? On Saturday, we're in Chalmette, and then on Sunday night, we're at UNO in the Performing Arts Recital Hall. I am so glad that you're playing for us, of course, the Alleluia Chorus, and that is the most famous part of, of the Messiah. But the Messiah, handles Messiah, how many years old now? Oh, <laughs> what is it? Um, 1740, so whatever the math is on that, and it 200. Keeps on going. And this, uh, the Messiah itself is sometimes played at Easter, but mainly at Christmas. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, we're doing pretty much the whole thing, so it isn't just the Christmas portion. Mm -hmm. You get the whole story from prophecy through birth, death, and resurrection. And I know that you all have a season. When is after uh, Christmas? What's the next performance? We're doing Haydn's Creation on March 29th at Temple Sinai. And uh, some things that we'll announce later once we okay. find out. Now, Stephen, if somebody is new to New Orleans or just loves to sing and wants to join, what do they do? If somebody wants to audition to come sing with us, just go to our website, symphonychorus.org, and there's full information there about what to do to come join and sing with us. And how many members of the chorus do you have these days? We have about 55. Okay, great. Well, thank you all who can come out this afternoon. Yes. And um, so it'll be over 100 total for this yes. weekend, okay? Well, we'll let you go ahead and perform. Thank you very much. Thanks, Peggy. And thank you all.
see the symphony chorus of New Orleans along with the Chalmette High School Voices Chorale and the UNO Chorale perform tomorrow at 7 p.m. at the Chalmette High Cultural Arts Center. That's the most beautiful art center. They perform again on Sunday in New Orleans at the UNO Performing Arts Center at 7 p.m. Go to symphonychorus.org for tickets and for more information. And now it's time for our artist spotlight. Tonight we are highlighting the work of two artists. This is Hestia by Deborah Howell. And here is Novena to St. Francis of Assisi for Guidance in the Climate Crisis by Mary Lee Eckert. There will be a reception with both artists tomorrow from 6 to 8 p.m. at Lemieux Galleries on Julia Street. For more information and to see more of their work and their art, go to LemieuxGalleries.com. By the way, Carol Robinson has her annual Christmas exhibit of gallery artists. That's tomorrow evening from 6 to 8, magazine at Napoleon. Now, Alan. So we're starting out tonight with a, a number of reviews of shows that all have a common factor of Christmas in them. First of all, the one probably least regarded as a Christmas show, but actually has a lot of Christmas it is Annie. Of course, that's the Martin Charnin and Charles Strauss musical with a book by Thomas Meehan that, uh, you know, was uh, so famous, started in 1976 on Broadway. Matter of fact, Charnin, who, who was the original uh, director of the uh, uh, Broadway, uh, died uh, in July. And mm. uh, so, uh, first time that we're going to be seeing Annie uh, at the Jefferson Performing Arts Center. It's opening, actually, tonight. Um, and again, uh, the heart and soul of Annie is the show's kid cast. And actually, they have the orphan children led by Annie, and they have two actual casts that are actually composed of two different groups that on alternating nights will appear in Annie. Uh, it's all run by Lynn Bordelon, who, who actually is making her directorial debut with Annie, uh, and, you know, with JPAS this time out. I really love Bordelon's work with the kids, especially in uh, It's the Hard Knock Life, and You're Never Fully Dressed Without a Smile in the Second uh, Half. She does a really terrific job with the kids, and as Oliver Daddy Warbucks, legitimate Metropolitan Opera star, bass baritone George Cordes is also outstanding. Maria Hefty, who plays Warbucks's uh, assistant Grace Farrell, uh, is also worthy of mention, along with Jennifer Schmemke in the role of Miss Hannigan, who runs the orphanage, of course. And there you see the kids. Tom Vaughn and Shelby Mack also provide some comic highlights in Easy Street. And Wayne Gonsolin as FDR uh, really has a role that literally keeps him rolling across the stage. Uh, now, this was a final dress rehearsal, so I'm a lot more forgiving than an opening night. But I, I found that the kids were all really pretty sweet and endearing. Uh, several the adults were a little bit more starchy and stiff than they should have been. <laughs> Tell them to kind of relax a little bit. It is, after all, Annie. They can take their cues from the kids who I found largely charming and endearing. And that's Annie through December the 15th. Again, Friday and Saturday performances and uh, Sunday matinees. Now, on to a show for uh, for kids uh, really uh, of an older age, if you will, people who uh, uh, maybe like to think of themselves as kids at heart. It's really a little bit more ribald and actually will make a lot of, uh, of adults blush. That's over at Rivertown Theaters for the Performing Arts. The laughs are hardly being contained with Ricky Graham, Varla Jean Merman, <laughs> and Yvette Hargis providing us with all of the comic relief that would ever want to have with their British music hall rendition of A Christmas Carol, which is, of course, their Scrooge in Rouge. Now, Jefferson Turner is also in support on piano. Uh, it's an original musical, a throwback to Victorian times with lots of adult humor and cross-dressing taken to the highest of levels. With Ricky Graham as the director and uh, actually the book writer as well as the lyrics uh, and, and Turner's evocative music, there's plenty of laughs to be had and also some really quality material. Now, Jeffrey Roberson as, uh, uh, and Yvette Hargis also offer some, some uh, uh, interesting bits and additional material, but um, this is really a show for adults.
Tales. It originally ran a decade ago and was reprised back, I believe, at the Mid City Theater. Cecile Casey covered, look at those costumes, does some mm -hmm. amazing job there uh, with the original costumes that she actually brought to date. Uh, some of the original costumes survived from the, from the earlier renditions, but she actually updated a couple and made some new ones. This is a comedy classic, though, no, make no doubt about it. Uh, it. Listen to the stage names. Charlie Schmaltz for Ricky, Lottie Obligato for Varla, and Vesta Verrill for, for, for uh, Yvette right there. It's just a, a romp. I also want to give a shout-out to Sue Gonzi for lighting and Brian Johnson for all the props, because there's lots of props in this, and Lindsay Romick for choreography. Scrooge and Rouge, however, keep in mind, only plays one more weekend, just two weeks, so if you don't already have a ticket, go get on the phone or go online and get it, because this is really one of the best shows around, and I just wish they'd bring this out every year. It's so much fun. Meanwhile, like Annie, there's so much talent within the ranks of the Victory Bells that the stage door canteen in the World War II Museum have been compelled to actually have two teams of bells for their latest rendition of their holiday show. This one's called A Merry Canteen Christmas. It's a BB stage door canteen. Now, the first team is composed, the red team, if you will, of Alexis Mortimer, Skylin Roussel, and Karis Goulage, with Bryce Slocum there playing all the male roles. The green team is Caitlin Galata, Haley Taylor, and Jessica Mixon. The show's directed by Hannah Rochelle, herself a Victory Bell, who also did double duty as choreographer, along with helps from Heidi Molnar. Uh, this is based on an original idea from yet another Bell, Victory Bell Mandy Mueller. Uh, uh, Erica Jensen, the managing uh, entertainment director at the World War II Museum, also helped with the writing. It's really a showcase of holiday music, though. More than 20 songs, which will get you nostalgic for the good old days, classic tunes. There are also a few surprises, like the Bell's rendition of the David Bowie and Bing Crosby duet of the Little Drummer Boy and Peace on Earth. Fantastic. Yeah. Or the Cordettes version of Mr. Santa, based on their earlier hit, Mr. Sandman. There are also dances from Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker, popular tunes like A Marshmallow World, and even Christmas is a Lonely Time of Year from Home Alone 2. So check it out. There's also time, also, uh, as you would imagine, for some religious offerings, like What Child Is This and Oh Holy mm -hmm. Night and uh, the rousing joy to the world that ends it all. But this is a red and green present that everyone should open while the show is still on at the World War II Museum uh, and their weekday matinees and also weekend uh, dinner and brunch options as well, so check that out on their website. And finally, for what might be a switch for Tennessee Williams, the Tennessee Williams Theater Company is presenting a period of adjustment. It's about two married couples. Now, whether they're happily married remains to be seen because, after all, this is Tennessee Williams. <laughs> the show opens uh, tonight, and uh, the next three weeks it'll be at the Lower Depths Theater at Loyola University. And this is actually live Lighter fare for Mr. Williams. Uh, yes, I lighter. would imagine so. Uh, <laughs> yes. I, I, as far as I know, everyone has their limbs, and everybody's uh, <laughs> yes. a little bit more happy than they normally would be. Yes. <laughs> And now time for our picks. Poppy. Oh, tomorrow night. Such fun at 7-3 Distilling. They're having their holiday cocktail showdown. It's just $20. There's eight bars competing starting at 7 o'clock. $20. They'll announce the winner at 9-15. And then during the day tomorrow at SoFab, made in Louisiana, which is a great place to do some holiday food gift shopping if you don't want to make it yourself at home. Great. Gwen. <laughs> I'm going to try, um, or I'm going to mention on Sunday night as well, this is at the Music Box Village on North Rampart mm. Street in Bywater. The, uh, there's going to be the final Twilight Serenade of 2019. This is a long series of, uh, of uh, concerts, um, really interactive concerts, which are wonderful, and it's going to feature Angelica Jelly Joseph, who's a singer who's really on the rise here in New Orleans and elsewhere. Mm. She um, she has a huge voice. She sings also with uh, Tank and the Bangas, mm. and she replaced Erica Falls uh, as the lead singer of Galactic. Um, and uh, and she's been touring with them for a while now. Um, these are jobs that require a big voice, and she has it. And I'm very interested in seeing what she's going to do um, on Sunday night. And there, uh, um, she and other musical guests are going to be, um, be performing musical or originals as well as covers and improvisations. They're going to be interacting with the soundscape of the houses on um, the Music Box Village compound. And um, I, I think this show's just going to be fascinating. Um, there's also dinner involved if you want to. So you can buy a ticket if you want to just to see the show, or you can buy for the show and dinner. All right. Thank you so much. Alex. And finally, a, a story of disassociated, uh, disassociated youth uh, with very large hair. This is uh, the tale uh, of, of a, a guy trying to fit in. It's the radical buffoon's telling of Rapunzel. Uh, and it's playing at the Southern. 
Women Reps Sanctuary Stage, uh, again, December the 14th and the 29th. Uh, again, I would recommend it it's for the kids, but it's also for adults. All righty. And my picks, Patrice McMurray, the wonderful jewelry de designer. She'll be having her jewelry show tomorrow right off Bayou St. John at 949 Harding Drive from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. and next Saturday as well. She'll even gift wrap your purchase. To see more of Patrice's creations, which I really love, visit uh, patrice.com. Her jewelry will also be available at the Arts Market in Palmer Park on Saturday, December 21st. The crew of Jingle Parade is also tomorrow at 1 p.m. It will begin at Lee Circle and move up St. Charles Avenue on to Canal Street and then down Barone, ending at Howard Avenue. Go to downtownnola.com slash holidays to learn more about all of the holiday events being planned for this month in the New Orleans area. The crew of Krampus Parade also rose tomorrow Ooh, at 7 p.m. in Bywater. It will start at the corner of Royal and Lesseps Street and end at Bratz Yall on Piety Street. Many custom items will be handed out, including bells, it's a walking parade, ornaments, and lumps of coal. The crew of Krampus, of course, Krampus is that mythical figure that uh, it's kind of scary looking, very devilish. But crewofkrampus.com for um, root, route and more information. St. Alphonsus's Art and Cultural Center's International Crush Display is on view tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Sunday from noon to 4 p.m. 2025 Constant Street, nearly 170 nativity sets from across the world will be on display, free admission. Call 504 524 8116 to learn more details. And finally, there'll be an open house at the late Roland Golden's home in Natchez, Mississippi, along with a studio showing this Sunday, December 8th, from 2 to 6 p.m. at 215 St. Charles Avenue in Natchez, Mississippi. The home is up for sale. Thank you all so much, and thank you very much for watching. Good night. This program is sponsored in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation a local foundation proud to support the arts and culture in the greater New Orleans area. Support for Steppin' Out comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich.